Our global food system is in crisis. There are currently two billion people on the planet. That's one in every four living, breathing human beings that are moderately to severely food insecure. That means that they're malnourished or they don't have access to the kind of food that will allow them to lead an active and healthy life. Now, by the year 2050, it's estimated that the global population will exceed 10 billion people. To feed that number of people is going to require the global agricultural community to increase production by more than 70 percent. While at the same time, it's expected that climate change is going to lead to a 20 percent decrease in global yields. So we have a pretty significant math problem on our hands. What are we going to do? There's enough arable land to feed all these people, but the problem is that it creates this massive supply chain issue. Because where this arable land exists is not necessarily where we expect to see the largest population increases. So what does that mean for the food system? Well, it means that foods are going to have to travel further and uh, likely will need to be more processed in order to be shelf stable to get to market. Food already travels on average 1,500 miles to get from uh, seed to plate. And along the way, it can lose as much as 40% of its nutritional quality. How many of you have been to the grocery store and bought some spring mix or some berries and you bring it home and you're already bummed out about it? You, it's starting to rot or mold. Um, I know that I have. A third of all food grown is wasted. Agriculture accounts for a third of global fossil fuel use, 70% of the world's fresh water consumption. It is killing our planet. And it's killing us. Over the past 35 years, there's been a substantial increase in the amount of foodborne illness outbreaks related to leafy greens. Who remembers the recent romaine outburst? Uh, there is a, a tie between that and... Uh, and, and just people getting sick across the country. Um, you can't relate that to people eating more salad. 60% of all calories consumed by Americans is what's deemed ultra-processed. And ultra-processed food has been directly linked to increased mortality due to heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. In fact, if all of these trends continue, by the year 2050, it's estimated that a third, one third, of all Americans will have type 2 diabetes. Our food system is broken. It is killing our planet, it's inefficient, and it's killing us. It is not safe. Ten years ago, something happened to me that completely changed the course of my life. It's made me a happier, healthier person. It's something that we've now been able to replicate for thousands of people across the US. And believe it or not, it all started with a plate of lettuce, which I admit is not the sexiest vegetable on the planet, but it is what it is. Um, I was living in New York, and I was completely consumed by the fast-paced, chaotic nature of the city. And my eating habits really reflected that. Everything that I put into my body was based on two decision points, price and convenience. If it was cheap and if it was easy, it was for me. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was really having a profound impact on my mental and physical health. Uh, by complete chance, I met this older gentleman who was doing something at the time that I thought was completely crazy. He was growing food on a rooftop in the middle of Brooklyn. And I had never heard of urban agriculture before, and I thought that this was the most amazing place. It was this oasis in the middle of the big city, overlooking the Manhattan skyline, just a beautiful place to be. And I thought that his model was fascinating. All the food that he grew, he would eat himself and he would feed his friends, and then the whatever was left over, which was a substantial amount of food, he would bring right downstairs to the food pantry that was on the first floor of this building. And I thought, how cool, what an interesting microcosm uh, and uh, an ecosystem. They're jumping ahead on me. Um, and so I decided I'm going to learn more. And I did a bunch of research, and what I learned really troubled me. 
One in every 11 Americans is food insecure. And there is this direct connection between poverty and consumption of these ultra-processed foods. So what does that mean? It means that if you're in poverty, if you're poor, you are significantly more likely to eat a lot more of these foods that are ultimately killing people. And that struck me as a real injustice. Why should it be that the food that people eat is the thing that keeps them in the poverty cycle? Why, why is it that food and nutrition just isn't available to everybody? We have enough arable land to do it. So I decided to volunteer for this guy. And over the course of the summer, he taught me to grow food hydroponically, which is growing food in water with a nutrient solution as opposed to in soil, which is what we're used to. And the reason we did it is because the roof, load bearing of the roof, couldn't handle all the way to the soil. So we had to engineer something different. And had a great time. At the end of the summer, um, he told me everything that you've grown, you can bring home as much of it as you think you're going to eat. And so. I said, cool. I put together a bag of lettuce, and I trucked it home on the subway, and you can probably see where this is going. Uh, and I bring it home, and I open it up, and I uh, plate myself this lettuce I was, I'd never cooked for myself at the time. And I eat this food that I grew, and that was the moment for me. That was it. That completely changed my life. And I think the reason is because when you spend your time with something, when you have an experience with anything, really, you build an emotional connection with that thing. You build a relationship with it. And I ultimately believe that that mechanic is at the root of all real sustainable change. And I think you can break it down into a pretty simple formula. I think it's experiences plus uh, emotional connection equals change. After that, I was transformed as a person. I, my eating habits completely changed. I felt so much better. I was taking better care of myself. And it wasn't because anybody told me I had to or that I needed to. It was because I really wanted to, because I had this new appreciation for this food that I had grown. And I, I loved it. It was, it was mine. And I understood where it came from. And so I decided I had to help other people have the same experience. And over the next three years, I found a group of like-minded people, and we built about a dozen uh, urban agriculture programs across New York, um, rooftop gardens at schools, indoor growing facilities for food pantries, and it was working. We were seeing increases in consumption of fresh food of people that were never eating fresh food. We were seeing increased positive perception of fresh food, which is one of the leading indicators of healthy behavior. And, and it was great, but none of the programs were willing to scale. And I needed to figure out why. And at the time, the systems that we were installing were all the state of the art at the time. It was these vertical rack systems or towers with plants growing around them, and they're incredible. They work very, very well, but when you run the numbers, they cost anywhere from four to eight dollars a pound just to grow the food. And these schools and food programs were not able to pay that much and scale the program to really feed a lot of people with this model. And so I thought there, there has to be a better way. And I spent the better part of five years um, researching. I met people that are way smarter than me who helped me out and uh, went through 30 prototype iterations, so failed 30 times before finally making a discovery. And it was uh, really simple, but we think pretty profound. Um, we're able to grow food uh, now for less than a dollar a pound, and this invention we call the Flex Farm. Um, the Flex Farm is uh, about the size of a refrigerator. It sits in a nine square feet space, three feet by three feet. It's six feet tall. And this thing can grow two, three, four hundred pounds of food in a year. And so you're talking about a substantial volume and impact that you can make on the nutritional side. Um, we really honed in on the two leading cost drivers 
in indoor agriculture as a sector, energy and labor. So focusing in how do we maximize the energy potential of every photon that leaves the LED lights and how do we take out as much complication out of the system so it's as easy to use as possible. There's only one moving part in this thing. And people are doing some pretty incredible things with it and we're just really proud to share that work today. Um, the first example I'd like to share is with Menasha Joint School District. They have 12 of these systems all daisy chained together, uh, effectively into one micro farm. Uh, the staff only has to take care of one centralized reservoir, which takes about an hour a week, and they're growing enough food to make it so that the district will never have to buy leafy vegetables ever again. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And these leafy greens are the highest nutrition, lowest calorie product that you can grow. And so think about the gap that you're filling. I mean, you're going from ultra processed to ultra not processed. Um, so this uh, system is taken care of by lunch staff, AmeriCorps volunteers, and kids. And that's what's so cool about it, is that the kids are involved in where the food's coming from and feeding their classmates and learning a lot of really interesting, cool things along the way. Um, second uh, partner I'd like to lift up is St. Joseph Food Program. They've got eight of these systems, and they feed over 500 families a week that are food insecure. And... Uh, Every family that goes through their line now uh, gets a head of lettuce if, if they want it. And to me, this is a perfect example of the type of systemic change that we really need to be looking at. We're dropping these systems really where people need them most. So instead of taking the approach of let's try to sell as many of these things that we're, as we can, we're really trying to figure out how do we bridge that health and hunger gap? How do we... How do we fix the food system as quickly as possible? And so I think getting this type of technology targeted to the people that really need it most is how we leverage uh, change the fastest. Uh, third example is a short story I'd like to tell you about um, a girl that goes to an alternative high school, uh, which is a high school that is meant for kids that just didn't succeed in a traditional school environment. And for whatever reason, she showed up to school and wouldn't talk. And nobody really knows why, but we knew she could talk, it's just she chose not to. And uh, she became part of a group of three or four high school students that took an interest in the system when it was installed and took care of it. And a month went by and the system was full of green, about ready to harvest, and the principal walks in and says, hey, I've been hearing about this thing. It looks really interesting. What is it? It's kind of a time machine, tanning bed looking thing. And, uh, and she jumps up unsolicited and gives like a five, 10 minute lecture on the system. Like, here's where I add the water, and the water pumps up, and then it dri drips down, and it feeds the plants, and here's how we test the pH, and add the nutrients, and here's how we harvest, and the whole, went through the whole thing. And everybody's jaw was on the floor. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, and ultimately why I wake up in the morning because this has become so much more than just being about food or about the food system. This is about people. I think we've come to learn that this type of engagement and this type of experience building has the ability to not just transform the way people eat, but to transform the way that people view themselves, which, uh, which is incredible. Um, just a picture of some, uh, some gals who grew enough food. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of lettuce right there. It's a, you can feed a lot of people. Our food system is broken. It doesn't feed the world. It's making the planet sick. It's making people sick. And we have to do better. I need better for my son. Everybody in this room and everybody watching at home can make this happen. Every decision that you make, every dollar that you spend, every vote that you cast, it can get us either closer 
to a sustainable food system or further away. Every food decision that you make, every time you decide whether to buy local or cook at home or eat with your loved ones around a table, those are the kind of experiences that lead to deeper connection, that ultimately lead to profound change. And I firmly believe that if just a small number of us, it only takes 3.5% of a population to completely change society. So if a small number of us start working on this, we will create a happier, healthier world. Thank you.